The Monster Under the Shed series may possibly be one of the best Thomas Fan series, in my opinion anyway. Not just because of how well made it is, and how well thought out the storyline is, but more because it does what many, many users don't. Most people nowadays stick to the classic series format when using stuff that looks like classic series, like Train Simulator or Bachman models, but very few actually decide to try and tell their own style of story, using creepy music cues or less narration or something. The Blue Snowplow is one of the few people I've seen that's actually taken the first steps to doing this, and it makes the series very, very entertaining. But what exactly is going on in this series? What's with all the creepy stuff? Why is the lake such an important part? Is there an actual monster? Well, I'm here to share my thoughts, but first, a quick summary of the series as a whole. The series so far is split up into three parts, with part 4 being the final part. Part 1 is an adaptation of the story Monster Under the Shed, which is where the little blue engine originates from. The story tells about a little blue engine who had to stay in an old shed one foggy night but got chased away by a monster never to be seen again. The rest of the story is about Thomas being kept awake worrying about this story. However, in this series we only hear the story, and instead of being told to us from James, it's from Edward, which automatically gives the story a lot more credibility. The part then however ends with an after credit scene revealing that the blue engine is alive and well, and his name is Hawin named after Harwin Lake, which is a lake that his line runs by. Remember that, that's very, very important. We also learn that his driver is Old Bailey, the man who appeared at the end of Haunted Henry. Oh, by the way, this entire thing takes place on the line from Haunted Henry. Part 2 then is a rewrite of Stephanie Gets Lost. As opposed to the original, where Stephanie gets lost and ends up in the smelter's yard, he stays at the old station, being left by his driver and fireman. Whilst there, he starts seeing some unnatural things, Trucks begin talking and then their faces disappear, and an owl of all things begins speaking to him. Things quickly take a turn for the worst, and they all start chanting about how selfish Stepney is. Stepney is forced to sit and listen as they talk about how he deserves to be in a scrapyard, and doesn't deserve the life he has. It suddenly cuts to Stepney shaking in his sleep, revealing that this has all been in his head, or at least I think that was the intention. Hawen couples up to Stepney and pulls him away, and part 2 ends. Part 3 opens up with Stephanie waking up in a shed. He goes to speak to Rusty, who tells him that Duncan has been seeing some weird stuff too, heavily implying that this story and the official episode Duncan Gets Spooked take place at the same time. Rusty gives Stephanie the idea to talk to Henry. Feeling unsafe at the old station, Stephanie refuses to work there and James is sent in his place. Unfortunately, James gets just as worse, if not worse, than what Stephanie got. We keep shifting from present day to James's first few days on the railway, where we learn that not many people acknowledged him and many forgot his name. This strongly implies that James's deepest fear is being forgotten, which would explain why he picked such a bright colour at the time, seeing most of the other engines were either blue or green. The owl causes James to have a bit of an accident, delaying him, and then the trucks begin torturing James the same way they did Stephanie. However, unlike Stephanie, they begin pushing James. James quickly loses control in the rails, falling down the ravine that the blue engine fell down many years ago. Speaking of, we hear Hawen's whistle in the distance, and the part ends. Also in this part, we learn how Edward met Hawen and Old Bailey. This also takes place during the same time as another episode, Thomas and the Breakdown Train. Edward arrives with a group of workmen, 
only to meet Harwin and Old Bailey, who insist that this part of the island isn't safe and that they should leave immediately. Edward returns to see Thomas getting the breakdown train. He then calls out that James has had a bad accident. Edward gets very concerned, and when he returns, Harwin and Old Bailey already know there's been an accident. They tell Edward the whole story, and that's how Edward knew the story in part one. So, if my explanation was a bit awkward, I'm very sorry about that. I'm assuming most people have seen the series anyway, but this is just for people who haven't. Which, if you haven't, like, why are you watching this video? Just go, go watch it. Seriously, it's amazing. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get to the main part of the video. The theory. Alright. So before I go any further, I need to introduce you to the two characters that are at the centre of this entire thing. You might be forgiven for thinking that one of them is Harwin, and whilst he is a very important character in this, he is not one of the two that are at the centre of the entire thing. Allow me to introduce you to Old Bailey and this guy. His number is just 1020, I don't know if he will or has a name in this series so I'm just going to call him 1020 for convenience sake. Based on the character in the Railway series, this engine is a very important part of the whole story. Or at least I think so anyway, and I'll explain why now. So far, 1020 has only appeared in three things to do with this series. One was a teaser trailer, or more a channel trailer, that the Blue Snowplow had made at the start of 2021. Second was an episode 3 in a flashback. You barely see him but he passes by with a passenger train. And the final was in the most recent teaser trailer for part 4. It suddenly statics and cuts to him flying off the rails with a passenger train. And I don't know if it's just an effect on the video, but it looks like he lands into a lake. Hmm. That's pretty much all we've seen of him so far. He has gotten a new model though to fit the TV series look, which I do like a lot. Now before I continue, I need to talk about the monster. This thing can take the form of owls, trucks, and people. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I think Old Bailey is the second most important character in this entire series, for he is the monster at Hawin Lake. Not only for the fact that he doesn't seem to age throughout the years, but also the fact that he seems to be the only human telling people to leave this part of the island alone. And I reckon that this monster lives in Hohen Lake. In the flashback scene where we saw 1020, we see Neil talking to Hohen, saying, Ready for another great day? Oh yeah, you bet. I'm taking a train to the new station by the lake today. I haven't had the chance to see it since they finished the construction. This tells us that the railway didn't always run to the lake. It's a recent thing that they've done. And the monster feels disturbed. Steam engines are coming right up to its home, and it doesn't know what to do. The monster, at some point, manages to get inside 1020's head, and fills him with pretty... unwelcome thoughts, to say the least. An interesting thing to note, is that in the teaser trailer where we see 1020 crashing, in the description, the blue snowplow says that this video contains dark themes, including suicide, which tells me that this accident wasn't an accident. My theory is that the monster did basically the same thing to 1020 with what it did to James and Stephanie. However, 1020 couldn't handle it and decided to end his own life, unfortunately while pulling a passenger train. The railway soon closed after this. The monster, while very guilty having that many people killed, was pleased because now it meant that it could enjoy its home in peace. However, years later, the Fat Controller decided to run his own services along the branch line. The monster knew it had to act again, but didn't want to instantly hurt engines or people. So it took the form of Old Bailey, an old man who insists that this part of the island gets left alone. The monster is hoping that people will listen to him, but of course, when they don't, it gets angry and starts doing drastic things, like it did to Stephanie and James. And God knows who else, I mean. This next part has to be very long with all the stuff that's been set up in the first tree. I think the series will have the same moral as Rusty and the Boulder. Some things are better just left alone. 
Although Haunted Henry does end with Old Bailey becoming the station master of the new station, I feel like that that's going to change. I mean, if the Blue Snowplow is willing to change the ending to Stephanie Gets Lost, who's to say he's not going to change the end to Haunted Henry? So, in conclusion, I think that 1020 and Old Bailey are at the centre of this entire series, with Old Bailey secretly being the monster, and the monster being the reason that 1020 took his own and many other people's lives after being tortured by the beast that just wanted its home to be left alone. It should go without saying, but none of this is official. Like, this is just what I've gathered with different bits of information that's been scattered throughout the series. But who knows, the final part could come out and I could be completely wrong, or maybe we'll never get the answer. Given how this is going though, that's what I think is going to happen anyway. Well, that was my theory video on Monster Under the Shed. Sorry if it was very, um, unprofessional. I don't normally do these types of videos, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Shout out to the Blue Snowplow for not only creating this amazing series, but giving me permission to do a video on it. I genuinely think that his series is one of the best in the Thomas community so far, and if you still somehow haven't seen it and watched this video, then please, please go ahead and do. I have an official playlist made, which basically has like all the official episodes that kind of tie in with his, so if you want to go see that, then please do, and I left a link to his channel in the description too. Oh, I'm dying for June. I really want to see how this plays out, how this final part happens. So, with that being said, um, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and whatever you do, don't edit your videos at home and make, because... Yeah. So earlier I said that part 2 implied that all that stuff was in Stephanie's mind. So how does the monster know what the engine's greatest fear is? Learn a lesson with Thomas where how things get blown out of proportion when you let your imagination run away with you. Oh for god's sake.